Huge news today. The Fourth Circuit just issued a published opinion ruling in our favor in the family court judge search case. This is going to be important judicial immunity case law for years to come. And this is my client's home. Your home is your castle. Your home is the most protected place there is under the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. I don't know if, if I've ever really heard that my, my house was illegally searched by a judge. And the reason for that is because that's not what judges do. Judges do not search houses. Judges do not search anything. In 2020, now former West Virginia family court judge Louise Goldston led the search and seizure of property in my client's private home over his strenuous objection and repeatedly through threats to have him arrested if he did not allow the search party to conduct the search that it did. Judge, can I ask you something real quick before we get started? I'm asking you right now, to, I'm putting in a motion to recuse yourself because you're putting yourself in a witness capacity instead of a judiciary capacity. There's no search warrant. I need a list of everything that we're looking for. Your motion's denied. It's not timely we're, filed. I need a search warrant. You won't get in my house without a search warrant. Oh, yeah, I will. Are you recording this? Yes, ma'am. Take his phone. Well, I think, Your Honor, we have to remember the judge has been punished for this. She was censured and fined. Um, she was reprimanded by the, the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals. But to take away her judicial immunity for doing something that she did not believe was in clear absence of her jurisdiction and opening her up to monetary See, I damages. Think her, I think that when you say she has been disciplined and stuff, it um, is not something in her favor for, for asserting judicial immunity here. Rather, it's something that would suggest that she's not entitled to judicial immunity for these acts. We won because we weren't won. We are the people. Freedom is scary, but not free. This is the saga of former West Virginia family court judge Louise Goldston, who on March 4th of 2020 was holding a family court proceeding related to a divorce action involving my client in her actual courtroom in Raleigh County, West Virginia. And then she asked my client for his address and said, be there in 10 minutes. And so she showed up at his house to physically search his house with her bailiff, a law enforcement officer, to see if items belonging to his ex-wife were in the house. Now, as you can see in the video, my client uh, made a motion for the judge to recuse herself. Standing in his front yard, she denied that. And he attempted to video film, to video record what was happening and also to audio record it. And she forced him to stop under threat of arrest. And she forced her way into his house, again, under threat of arrest. Can we, hey, hey guys, I need you off my property, please. Hey, you ain't allowed on my property. The only one's allowed right now is the judge and the deputy. Step off the property. Yeah. Step off the property. Judge, can I ask you something real quick before we get started? Judge, can I ask you something before we get started? Can you come here? I ain't trying to have everybody else listen. Well, well, Mr. Luff gets to listen. That's good. Um, I'm asking you right now, to, I'm putting in a motion to recuse yourself because you're putting yourself in a witness capacity instead of a judiciary capacity. There's no search warrant. I need a list of everything that we're looking for. You've got a list of everything that's worth for the Not today. To the order. Not today. I don't know where someone was at. Well, we're so going to find you it. You got it? Your motion's denied. It's not timely we're, filed. I need a search warrant. You won't get in my house without a search warrant. Oh, yeah, I will. And on that order, ma'am, it says swing. Uh, these are two separate purchases. You can't argue with me while I'm doing this, okay? Sorry. Order to order. I'll have to think about that, because that's pretty permanent in. That's not bolted down. It is bolted down, all yeah. four legs. It is absolutely it's bolted, bolted down. down. Yes, it is. So I'll have to think about that. Ma'am, step off. I don't need you in my land. Please go that way. Please no, go away. She's entitled to be here. Now, you're either going to let me in that house, or he's going to arrest you for direct. Are you recording this? Yes, ma'am. Take his phone. You're not allowed to record this. Don't take the my phone, sir. Recording too. Turn off your phones. I'll take you to jail if you don't turn them off. Do you understand that? Your phone's not on, ma'am. Why is she holding it? Yeah, why is she holding it? Put it up. Give him the phone or you're going to be arrested. I can record on my you land. You cannot. This is my land, ma'am. 
I am the judge Control trying to country. affect equitable distribution. Here. We are having a hearing. Okay. Go on. Now, you let me in that house, but he's gonna, he is going to arrest you for being in direct contempt of court. I don't think the phone's off, Your Honor. I think it's just in his pocket. I just turned it off. Let's go. Let Come the officer on. check the phone. Control 160. It was on. It was on. No, my phone's not off. It was on. The recording's off. As the Fourth Circuit noted in their opinion that they issued today, we lack a record of everything that happened. The bailiff recorded only seven minutes of the 20 or 30 minute search. No one made a contemporaneous record of all that was taken. No police report describing the search was ever filed, even though the backup sheriff's deputy eventually arrived, entered the home, and helped with the search. But this is the actual video footage uh, that was filmed by the bailiff that surfaced um, much after I posted the original footage to YouTube. He, didn't have to, he can have it. The other one, take that one. Okay. Here. Just set it right there. We'll get everything when we leave. Happy to take machine off. Woo! Woo! That's cold. Well, he's not. Huh? Yes, I would never do it. My understanding was I sent it to I understand what you're saying. I'm saying I'll send it to him. That is not what the order says. Um, where can I send? Oh, there's the other picture. Okay. Control on voting. It's just like the order him to follow the rules. Judge. Judge. Hey, I so, just came by and back to our lawyers on there. Okay. What else do you think is like here? The, uh, yeah. And then you have to go in this closet. This is where we kept them. I don't need her to do the most. I can't do my dad in the low interest. Get them. You watching the podcast by the Lowe's entrance? Can I see these? I could tell it looked like they were outside looking at the rear end of the vehicle. The CDs, I got DVDs. I got the, oh, they're downstairs. Okay. Did you buy any old ones for Christmas? Yeah. Those are $5. Yes, ma'am. Those are best ones. Okay. So she's picking the ones she wants. Yeah, no, I'm, these are ones yeah, I know. You know, know. Yeah, she's, 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 she's just picking the ones right now that she, she knew was below, what I knew we had. And if we have to, we'll sit here and let you pick the one that her picked. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you did say that's there fair. were 24 total when he gave her 12. I, did, I said I'll never be counting, so that's what I said. But she says there are 12. She's going to get out the ones that she says y'all had. So I want you to kind of watch her so you can disagree with any one of the ones that she had. I'm going to let you pick the first 12 because she got 12. You may want to caution them on how much stuff she's taken if she has the capacity to take it out of here. We do. Okay. That's right. Like all of these and all of these are ones we have purchased in our here. All of the uh, box series of The Walking Dead. And that footage actually showed Judge Goldston taking her shoes off inside my client's house. And that actually became an important part of the case here. It was discussed by the judges at oral arguments, which happened last month, that this judge was seen in the video, the, the surviving video of the search, literally in his house without her shoes. And in the opinion released today, they mentioned that. Here's what they said. 
At the outset, we note that Judge Goldston's visit to the Gibson home had none of the usual trappings of a judicial proceeding. She was not in a courtroom, nor was she wearing a robe. For much of the interaction, she wasn't even wearing shoes. The line between judicial acts for which ju judicial immunity is appropriate and acts that simply happen to have been done by judges is often a fine one. Ultimately, the court held that Judge Goldston's actions instead marked her out as part of the law enforcement team. She put herself in the position of participating not only in the search of a private home over the objection of the homeowner, but in the seizure of that homeowner's property. She demanded that the homeowner cede entrance not only to her, but also to his ex-wife and her attorney. While inside, she personally ordered the seizure of various items, photographs, yearbooks, DVDs, recipes, and a chainsaw. More than just participate, Judge Goldston supervised the whole operation. Last month, we had oral arguments before the Fourth Circuit in Richmond, Virginia. Here are a few excerpts. On our side, the oral arguments were handled by Patrick Giacomo of the Institute for Justice. As the panel's already discussed with my friend in 2020, now former West Virginia Family Court Judge Louise Goldston led the search and seizure of property in my client's private home over his strenuous objection and repeatedly through threats to have him arrested if he did not allow the search party to conduct the search that it did. In so doing, Judge Goldston, as confirmed by the West Virginia Supreme Court and the district court in this case, stepped outside of her judicial role completely and importantly, violated the separation of powers and her basic jurisdiction. Do you have any authority under South Carol or West Virginia or any other law that suggests that a family court judge can conduct home visits? Your Honor, the judge believed no. that she... First answer my question, and then you can tell me about what the judge believed. <laughs> Is there any authority for that? How can, she be, how can you say she was merely supervising when she was there going item by item as to what could be seized and what could not be, didn't that move from supervision to participation? Well, Your Honor, they had a list of the property that had not been turned over. She was there super- Checking things off. Checking- this, It sounds to me like she's, part, she's participating. <laughs> she, once they entered the home and they went downstairs, the judge took a seat in a chair and we'll call it the family room where the DVDs were. What are we supposed were. to do with the instructions that were given? Here, this item should be taken. No, we don't need to take that item. Um, isn't, didn't that make her a party, a, a, a member of the search party? No, Your Honor, because again, there was no search. They had a list of items that had not been turned over. The judge sat down. How do you say there was no search? Because they didn't actually search. When the ex-wife asked if she could search, the judge told her, no, you have to know where these items are. And in fact, it was... So um, I think maybe we're quarreling <laughs> unnecessarily about search. So I say to my daughter, would you go upstairs and search for my black purse? I think it's in the second drawer on the left. Okay, so I, I know where it is, and she, but she is being sent to search. So I, I think that distinction is really not so helpful. This is a search. They're looking for items and finding them. I think we're going to have to agree to disagree on that, Your Honor. Well, okay, I, but you have to work with mine. <laughs> <laughs> I get to make the call, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, well, I think, Your Honor, we have to remember the judge has been punished for this. She was censured and fined. Um, she was reprimanded by the, the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals. But to take away her judicial immunity for doing something that she did not believe was in clear absence of her jurisdiction and opening her up to monetary See, I damages. Don't think her judicial immunity, I think that when you say she has been disciplined and stuff, it um, is not something in her favor for, for asserting judicial immunity here. Rather, it's something that would suggest that she's not entitled to judicial immunity for these acts. As I mentioned, those were only some excerpts. Um, the female lawyer that you hear arguing is the lawyer for Judge Goldston. So just this morning, the published written opinion came out 
and really it couldn't have been better for us. And it was a great opinion for um, fighting against judicial immunity. And this is what it hinged on was not the fact that Judge Goldston was a judge or believed erroneously that she was able to do what she was doing. It has to do with the nature of her actions. And the court held, while Judge Goldston might have had the authority to order a search, the proper authority to conduct the operation was the local sheriff's department or some other appropriate law enforcement agency. Uh, and while a greater merger of judicial and executive functions might be more efficient, that very efficiency would facilitate abuses of power. The framers made a trade-off. They gummed up the gears just a bit in return for protection against tyranny. We now respect that trade-off by holding that judges should not take law enforcement into their own hands, no matter the efficiency such usurpation might provide. And that was the major defense here by the judge and her lawyers was that, look, you know, this guy wasn't obeying the divorce order. We had reason to believe that these items were in his house and um, this was the most efficient way to handle it. Now, certainly that is efficient. If you have a family court judge who is trying to enforce an order and one party is alleging that somebody hasn't turned something over, yeah, the most efficient way to handle it is for the judge to go there and do it herself. But there's a little bit of a problem there, and that is the Fourth Amendment. And when I first took this case, and when I first uh, started fighting it, not everybody was in agreement that the Fourth Amendment applied here. But of course it applied. Of course I was right. So where does that leave us now? Now, remember, the first thing that happened was the judicial disciplinary case that went all the way to the West Virginia Supreme Court, and the West Virginia Supreme Court issued a scathing opinion denouncing what the judge did, and I ended up uh, suing her, and during the course of taking her deposition, she was very defiant against the West Virginia Supreme Court, and when the West Virginia legislature got, got word of that, they began impeachment proceedings against this judge. And she ended up resigning under threat of impeachment. And so we proceeded with the civil rights lawsuit. We got within a few days of trial and then the court issued, the trial court issued the written opinion denying judicial immunity and ordering her before a civil jury for trial on the question of, of money damages. Because with qualified immunity or absolute immunity or judicial immunity, you get to appeal even prior to trial. That's what she did. So she appealed to the Fourth Circuit, and that whole process took well over a year. So here we are. So what happens now? Well, she lost her appeal on the denial of her judicial immunity. So now she is ordered to jury trial. So we're, now we're going to get back on the trial docket, and we're headed towards trial on this case. Now, one neat thing that happened was is my client surprised me here at the office after we had won um, – the initial decision on judicial immunity, and he actually presented me with the flag that was flying out in front of his house the, the day I first went to his house to hear the story about what happened. It's now due to you, my friend. You understand? You know how important that flag means to me? Because if you don't want it, they call me, take it back. <laughs> so I want you to listen to this. What's your point? Okay? In West Virginia, she's been trampled on and disrespected. In our great state, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands is corrupt throughout the land. She was getting wore out. She was wearing thin. But she's in good shape for the hell she's been in. Because she's been through the fight before, I believe she'll take the corruption no more. So we will stand for what is right. John Bryan, thank you for taking on the fight. We won because we weren't one. We are the people. Freedom is scary, but not free. Thank you again for joining me. Oh. Oh, awesome. That's so beautiful. <laughs> 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 oh. Thank you.